about to open a window into the life of a ghost hunter. We'll show you dark, creepy roads that fade into the night. We'll show you haunted places, but most importantly, we'll show you what happens along the way there. This is Ghost Hunter 1. Anybody seen anything strange out on the roads tonight? Well, we got our first contact with the CB radio. And uh, we're working on getting out there on the road tonight, getting this thing set up so that we can perhaps get some stories from some truckers along the way. Uh, we did go ahead with the plan that we talked about, purchase this Cobra 29 NW LTD Classic Night Watch. And let's take a look at this thing right here. It's got light up controls and the lights just went off in the car so you can really get a good look at it here. So of course this is perfect being that most of our ventures will be at night and uh, we can go ahead and see if we can get any stories tonight for our new segment that we're going to call Breaker One Paranormal. here to cook out in Gloucester and I gotta say not a whole lot of activity on the CB radio on the way up here but it, uh, it is kind of early yet I yeah. suppose and it is we weren't really on any interstates no just yeah. you know regular highway but just normal traffic on the highway really right. not a lot of truckers to be seen so right we saw Papa John's truck and I tried to call him, but I guess he didn't have a CB radio or didn't have it on. Yeah. I even called him by name. I was like, hey, Papa John's, but yeah, no, no answer, no answer. But we're going to keep trying throughout the course of the night to see if we can get anybody to tell us some kind of a story. Somewhere along the way, somewhere along the travels this weekend, yeah. we want to get a story of paranormal activity, some kind of ghostly sighting that's been seen along the interstate, yeah. along the highway from these truck drivers that are traveling America's roads. Yep. And if not tonight, there's always tomorrow night. Absolutely. Now, speaking of tonight, let's talk about where we are off to. So tonight, we are going out to a church called Yokomiko. And this is not a church that's very known to be haunted. Um, it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. It's up north of Warsaw, Virginia. And um, But this is one of those places that my father has been out to and um, heard voices in the cemetery when he was walking around in the broad daylight and um, said there was nobody around. He couldn't find anybody where the boy, any source for the voices. So um, he automatically thought it was haunted. So uh, we're going up there to check it out and see if, if my father's claims are true. Uh, so the food has arrived and this is the hush puppies. I gotta say, they're usually pretty good. They're usually so good that they melt the foam, but yeah. it doesn't appear that it happened this time. Really hot. Uh, I got the burger, cookout style, and the corn dog. And I might have gotten your burger. Ah, there's your burger. Look at that. Yeah, that's not mine, I don't think. There's no bacon on there. I thought you got uh, the, the stuff that had coleslaw on it. 
Yeah, I did. The sure did. Yeah. Check that other burger. Let's take a look at it there. Yeah, that one's got the, that, that one's got mine right there. Yeah. See, this is the cookout style with coleslaw, but the thing is, I added bacon and cheese to it, and I believe the cookout style also has chili on, which I am quite a fan of. So take two, a little mix up with the burger here. Yeah, that looks right. Okay, That's cheese. The out west style there. Yep, bacon, some barbecue sauce on there, some pickles. That's good. A large That's slice good. onion. Yep. I gotta say, I feel there were slightly less fries than last time. <laughs> because I, I was yeah. sitting here just while you were up there and I almost destroyed all of the fries that were here. Yeah, yeah, there might be slightly less fries. So I gotta say, the cookout style burger, it is indeed one of my favorites. I mean, it's got that charred, like, grilled flavor to it. Very good burger. Mmm. <laughs> Roger that, good buddy. What's your call sign? I'm headed north on 17 in search of the unexplained and unknown. Anybody out there? Yeah, we had somebody come in for a second. But uh, driving up here along 17, there's not a whole lot. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, we're gonna keep trying though, because you never know. It might be out there. What stories they might have to tell. Breaker 1-9, this is Ghost Hunter. Entering the town of Tappahannock. Can anybody tell me, how's the coffee at the Sheets? Channel 19 seems like a ghost town tonight, at least here in Tappahannock. We'll be stopping off at the Sheets. Let you know how the coffee is, and if it's safe to go in. <laughs> well, we powered down the CB. Mm -hmm. Gonna stop off at Sheets in Tabahannock, and of course, I asked, uh, or I didn't ask, I said I'll let you know if it's safe. Mm -hmm. Because the, the Sheets, it, it's been questionable before. It I has. gotta say, it's, it, it yeah. has. Right about this time of the night, it's not bad at all. It's it's perfectly fine. It's just later on, as as time presses on right. into the darkness, that it starts to get quite scary. Yeah, when we've happened up here past midnight. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, they've had the the parking lot roped off before the police roped, yeah. roped it off because of crimes. It's like um, a crime scene. Yeah, yeah. On on I think more than one occasion. We've yeah, it was roped off a couple it. times. Yeah. yeah, we've had to bypass it because of you know too many too many police in the parking lot to get in here sideways. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it tends to be a little scary. It does. Yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and venture in here. Perhaps not the scariest part of the night, but yep. maybe it'll be up there. We'll see. So these are muffins, triple chocolate muffins. Last time we saw the cake, but this time they got the muffins. And I got to say, those things look pretty good. I wouldn't mind having one of those for breakfast or any time, really. They mm -hmm. got the, this, this is what I've been looking at. Look at the Hershey's cake. Yeah, we saw yeah. that at the other sheets we were at yeah. last time. Uh, that looks really good. does look pretty good. good. I think it's a sign that we keep seeing this stuff. I Maybe know. it's something we definitely need to try. I think so. Strangest thing. I walk into the bathroom, uh -huh. and there's a guy coming out, and he says, this place is haunted. Now, what are the odds that <laughs> I would walk into the bathroom... And somebody would tell me it's haunted. Like, I don't have anything VAPI on. I got, like, a flannel shirt, some peanut chews in my pocket, but I didn't have them in my pocket when I was going to the bathroom. But uh, he said, it's haunted. And I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean? He said, the whole time I've been standing here at the urinal, he said, these sinks, both of them keep turning on by themselves. Really? And I was like, what are they, motion-activated sinks? He's like, yeah. So I go in there, and sure enough, 
the whole time I'm in there, these sinks are turning on. That's weird. Well, a guy comes in and goes into the stall. Uh huh. So I didn't want to like take out the video camera and like sit there and hold it at the sinks. At you the know, sinks. I thought it'd be weird if I'm like, anytime you pull out a video camera in the bathroom, like that's right, that's a little that's odd. a bad thing. But right. I did it, and uh, I got the tail end of this thing <laughs> coming on and going off, and I'm standing there holding this camera at the sinks, and the rest of the time it doesn't come on. Are you serious? Yeah, the whole time I'm standing there recording, it doesn't come on. Like, I caught the tail end of it running. Shit. Like, I walked over, I caught it real quick, shut off, didn't come back on. I'll be damned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I had to stop recording because the guy was coming out of the stall, and like I said, right. the whole weird thing. A little bit so, strange. Yeah. yeah. Breaker 1-9, this is Ghost Hunter, headed north on 17. Just stopped in at the Tappahannock Sheets. The coffee is piping hot, and the bathrooms are haunted. Anybody out there tonight? Not yet. Seems that we made a wrong turn down here in Tappahannock, but I saw this. Civil War monument over here. Wanted to stop off and take a look at it. Erected to soldiers of Essex and those who fought with them. They fought for the principles of state sovereignty and in defense of their homes. To maintain these rights, the gallant sons of this gallant county marched gladly to the front and did their duty like men from the opening guns at first Manassas to the final charge at Appomattox. And down here is a cornerstone, laid June 28th, 1906. So one more look. At the monument. And of course it's always cool to stop and check out monuments like these. Uh, that was definitely a Confederate monument. And I got to say, the video doesn't do it justice as we pan up and we look at the soldier on top of this pedestal with the blanket of stars behind him. Uh, it's quite an amazing sight. Yeah, so we're on the road that's leading to the church. And it definitely is a creepy road, I will say. There's a few scattered residents at the beginning of it, but then you get to these areas where it's like these trees, where it's these trees that just kind of canopy over the road. And oddly enough, there's a car behind us. Huh. So we're out here at the church right outside the graveyard, and we decided that perhaps what we should do is turn on the CB radio because there's been some reports in the past of strange voices that have come across the radio. And we'd like to see, just on the off chance, I mean, this isn't something that we we know has ever been applied to paranormal investigation, but how interesting would it be if we picked up something out here? Now, of course, person, perhaps, but it would be interesting if it was some kind of an indicator that it was a spirit that was able to communicate with us through this radio. So, let's give it a try. Is anybody out there tonight? What's your birthday? What year were you born?
How old are you? Where are you right now? It would be crazy if a voice came across and said in the graveyard. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. Wouldn't that be something? Well, it was worth a shot. Yes. You never know what's going to happen. You never. We don't know. I mean, with spirits... There's so little known. People will claim to be experts and claim all these facts, but there's so little known. There's so many strange things that happen that really seem to have no explanation. So anything is worth experimenting with when it comes to paranormal investigation, I think. So just first impressions. Of course, it's very cold out here, um, but this is a quite a cute little church. Um, not your typical church, not styled like it. It doesn't have a big steeple by any means, but the graveyard is quite large, and I believe that it extends all the way around the back of the church as well. I'm Jeff. This is Linda over here. And we're just visiting. We've heard reports of people talking up here in this area. And we'd like to know if perhaps there's anything they'd like to say. A message that they'd like to get out we could perhaps help get that message out there for you. I have this little device right here. If you do come near it, it could light up and let us know that you're here. Can you come near this device for me, please? This little black box. Let me make sure that's not me tapping on it. It did light up. It's not tapping. If that was you that lit this up, that made these lights come on, can you come near it again for me, please? This other little black box up here on the wall can actually capture your voice. It can record it so that we can listen to it and hear you talk. Can you try telling us your name? Is your name written on one of the stones in this graveyard? A leaf blowing. My phone is having trouble focusing when I go to snap off a picture, 
it's like it has to zoom in and out a few times before it actually focuses on something. I don't know why, but the autofocus is usually not messed up on my phone. Could it be because it's so dark? It could be. You know, it's trying to grab something in the darkness. I know mine does that sometimes when it's like really... It could be. Really dark. But I've been in the dark before and tried to snap pictures with it, and it really doesn't do that. It just kind of snaps off the picture. Is that dog barking in the distance? How long have you been here on this land? Did you live nearby? What was your job or your profession? Tell you one thing that's interesting. That light over there keeps, keeps going, going off and on. on. I noticed that. Could be a power save, like an energy save type thing, but. Well, and it could be it's motion detected, so it might be seeing something because it's a little gust of wind comes by every so often. Mm -hmm. So it might be moving a branch or something just enough to make it set that light off. How many of you are here? Me sniffling. Are you okay with us being here? So we did a brief EVP session mm -hmm. there for a little while right? by the side of the graveyard, set the K2 meter up. Mm -hmm. It did seem that we got a couple of spikes on the K2 meter, but I still am skeptical about it. Right. You know, the K2 meter, because it seems to go off just at random times. It does. Um, even though there weren't any real reasons electrically or EMF fields out there, I mean, you're, you're at a church with a church graveyard next to you and and really no electrical work around that could be causing a spike in it. That seems kind of interesting at the very least, but um, like like you, I'm still a little bit skeptical of that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but we tried to get it to go off again and it didn't. Right. So it didn't go off the rest of the time we were there. There was an interesting historical marker on the site right. and it talked about a poisoning that happened there during the war of 1812 this was in 1814 mm -hmm. the british troops came up and i believe it was at the thompson house or the yes. thomas house yeah they found poisoned wine and right. accused the u.s infantry of poisoning the wine uncivilized warfare and they held a court there and the court found that it was unfounded right and right. the british accepted that ruling now at this time i guess the church was in near ruins mm-hmm yeah, I believe that it had been pretty much pummeled. I mean, there was some sort of a, a battle nearby, and and the um, uh, the infantry was actually encamped on the church grounds at the time. So we know there had been a, a presence of Virginia militia of soldiers um, on the on the grounds, and you know you never know who might have died there from some sort of sickness or something. Um, you know, there's no telling. So. It was worth asking if there had been a battle there or if, you know, who might be there. Because um, it stands to reason that there could be spirits wandering around such an old church. Absolutely. Absolutely. But now we're going to continue venturing into the night, wandering around some back roads. Mm -hmm. Perhaps come upon a town or two and see what's there. Yeah. And check in on the old CB. Yep. Who knows? Breaker One Paranormal. We might have a good segment here. Right. If not today, maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow. Driving along 64 West. Got Tanya in the back there. She's doing some research on the road. 
What are you finding, Tanya? Anything good? Not yet. Well, well, the investigation, the location is up in Stafford, Virginia, which is a pretty cool area. There's a there's a story of a cemetery up there, a witch's pond. Yes. By this cemetery, and unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get out there because at night, apparently, the graveyard keeper like chases people with a shotgun. Yeah. And we thought this was urban legend. Like, okay, this is one of those things that kids talk about. Yeah, you go up there, you can get chased by. Right, but it's real. True. There was a newspaper article, and the graveyard keeper is actually not, he's not really like the graveyard keeper. He's just some guy that, that volunteers to do it. Yeah. And he comes after anybody that goes up there at night. Yeah. So. Well, it's understandable. I mean, the kids are going back there, and they're, like, worshiping Satan back there and stuff. And, you know, I right. mean, knocking over gravestones and... and you know, just vandalizing it. And defacing the property idiot. and stuff. And, and yeah. they asked him about ghosts, and he said the strangest thing he's seen was, he, he talked about some strange things that he's seen, but it was all people. Right. You know, I'm and sure. one yeah. of them was this lady that was out there in a, in a robe, in a dark robe, holding some kind of a dead chicken. And yeah. when he went and approached her and she took her hood down, it was actually Tanya. <laughs> so, I don't know. Some strange things out there in the graveyard at night, for sure. But we are looking along the way here. We got a little bit of time, and depending on the length of the investigation, hopefully we'll be able to show some footage from the investigation if they allow us to. Uh, but depending on time, we're going to see what else is in that area, yes. because Fredericksburg is right there. There's several places. Manassas is not far from there. Right. There's a lot of places where there are some ghost stories, and perhaps something extra we could look into. Yes. Currently, the CB radio is down. The antenna. We're having a little bit of problems with the antenna. Yeah. Um, but uh, one of our friends, Rich, shout out to him. He gave us some good advice. So along the way, we're going to be stopping at Love's, yeah. seeing if we can do an on the road repair here and get this thing up and running. Right. See what we pick up. And by the way, Stafford is one of those places where there is a wings to go, correct? Oh, and that's the big wings to go. That's that the is. one that's. Oh, oh, here we go. Tanya, <laughs> dinner plans just changed. Just changed. Wings to go in Stafford. Here we come. The highlight of the night. I like the wraps. Yeah. Yeah. Looked good. Yeah, you'd like some wraps. I like the wraps. Wraps yeah. are good, but not the music. The, no. no, just the, the wraps. They're healthy. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a nice Yeah, very well put on definitely. We stopped here at Love's, and we got the Little Will. And I'm gonna to try to install this into the CB radio, see if this helps our SWR problem. And some cracked Ooh. pepper. I was gonna say black pepper, but it's cracked, cracked pepper. pepper. Yes. Sunflower seeds. Nice. So hopefully after this install, we'll be able to crack these things open and uh, be set for the road, for the interstate on the way up there. Get some stories, we'll see what happens. So our rig here, we got the cigarette lighter power cord and we hooked a little wheel up. So I'm gonna turn this thing on and what we're gonna do first is we're gonna to go to calibrate it. So we've gotta flick this switch down to calibrate and when I key the mic, we're gonna see that little meter move. And we want it to go right to this little calibration mark right there. We'll turn this SWR knob until it's right on that little mark there. And then one other thing I'm going to do is put the SWR up and see how high it gets. See, now it's perfect. It's, it's low, low. Very low. It's All right. Really low. Yeah. My windshield wipers came on by themselves. Yeah. How that happened. Now I'm going to go to channel one and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to switch it down to calibrate. Let's get that calibrated right there. And then check the SWR. And it's very low. Perfect. Perfect. So you're supposed to do this for every channel. Calibrate it, but uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. I mean, it's it's well, fairly calibrated on every channel. Let me go up to channel 10. One guy online said to, to do it for channels 1, 19, and 40. That's a good idea. And and I saw someone that said start on 20 and do every one. And then someone said check. So let's let's see. We're calibrated. Let's see the SWR right here real quick. Oh, oh it's low. Awesome. Good, good, Perfect. good. Yep, low will is the way to go. Yep. Uh, thanks, Rich. But let's see what we can get here. We're, we're right here at this truck stop with all these truck drivers here. Let's turn this thing up and see what we can get here. Okay. <laughs> Breaker 1-9, this is Ghost Hunter. Yep. 
maybe they're sleeping. Can I get a radio check? Check, check. Come again, radio check. It's working. Yay. Yeah. That's a good copy. Thank you for your assistance. There you go. <laughs> hey, our first contact. It's not with aliens. <laughs> Unless the aliens were truck drivers, which this is a definite possibility. You never know. Sounds like a good novel plot. It does. It does. Uh, where, you know, you're contacting other truck drivers and actually aliens came down and took over all the truck drivers and started driving trucks. Yeah. yeah. So, the meat stick is a bourbon and bacon flavored sausage with the bacon cheese. And you can see the cheese has little flecks of stuff down in there. Oh, man. Right, That's the bacon. Mm -hmm. It is. It's exceptionally good. And the meat stick, stick is not tough. It's kind of tender which I really like, and um, it's quite good. What's the brand on that? Oh, uh, let's see. Old Wisconsin. Old Wisconsin. Wisconsin knows cheese. They do. Evidently, they know meat sticks, too. So, that's some. That's a good meat stick. Hey, this is Ghost Hunter. Wonder if anybody has any strange stories from along the highway. In 12 miles, take exit 43 on the left. Merge onto I-95 North toward Washington. Maybe not. kind of like the spirit box you know what I mean gotta uh -huh. give them a chance gotta give them a chance to come back may not be instant responses yeah anybody seen anything unexplained in this part of Virginia either they have and they're not willing to talk about it or they haven't that could be Try again in a little bit. Yeah. Roger that. Looking to compile some ghost stories from along the highway. Seen anything strange out there? <laughs> That's a good copy, I hear that. <laughs> so we wandered in here to Stafford. Stafford Wings, the original. Because for some reason it's shown Wings to Go on the map, but Wings to Go is no longer there. Right. So we don't have kind of a left anymore. Right, Tanya? Because Tanya... Well, not yet. It has wraps. Not good. Okay. Well, Tanya's still good. They don't have the suicide sauce. But we're looking over some of these sauces here. And they have hot, which is mouth warming. Extra hot. says mouth burning for most. Insane makes, makes most people sweat. And ultimate insanity, our hottest. So what are we thinking, Tanya? I'm thinking you ought to go for the insanity. Or the ultimate insanity. Yeah, the ultimate insanity. The ultimate insanity. I will say... For sure about Stafford Wings here. There are a lot of TVs in this place, are there not? They're all on different channels. Yeah, they're all on. Well, there's hockey going over there, and that's one thing you don't see a lot around here. So what I don't get is why every single one of them is on a sports channel. Because I think they think this is a sports bar. Could Trying be. Trying to get You'd the think drinkers that they in want here. to attract the women as well. And put one on like HGTV or something like that. You know. See, that's, that's true though, Tanya, sports bar, it's interesting, because yes. I always thought they called it a sports bar because athletes ate there. No. You know what I mean? <laughs> they, but I guess... The drinkers go to the sports bar. I guess that's why. Yeah. <laughs> athletes go. So, I'm going to take a shot of this. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> shot. Try this out. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. That's pretty good. Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'll take eight of them. Alrighty. You want to try it? No. It's really good. It's got good flavor. Yeah, I'm sure it does. I'm sure it tastes really good. Daniel? <laughs> no, thank you. I'm good. So that was the ultimate insanity. Right. Was that sauce? It's right here. Take a look at it. 
and it's pretty good. And the reason I sampled it is because I was just going to go for it. Right. I was just going to go for the ultimate insanity. But Linda and Tanya kind of talked me out of it. They were like, look, you need to sample that first, right? Why, why do you... Because I usually just go right into it, right? But what made you... Because... The lady that was the, the waitress, she was like, it is super, super hot, like really, really hot. But in the past, we've experienced that this is something that is sort of, you know, kind of in the tongue of the beholder, for lack of better words. I mean, you know, some people think things are extremely hot and other people don't. Jeff is really used to hot stuff, so I think he's good. Thank you. Thank you. So I think, um, I think Jeff could handle it, but, but just to make sure that it was something that he could handle, we figured, you know, why not sample it? Right, and I have to say with the sauce, at, at least the taste I've had, it's got really good flavor. Yes. Very good flavor. But it is the kind of heat that stays with you. Like I can still feel the heat on my tongue, <laughs> like and where it touches the side of my lip, yeah, my uh -huh. lips burning still. Okay. Yeah. So it is the stick so with we'll you see type how heat. It, like, is going down. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So the wings have arrived, and here's the, what were these called, Ultimate Insanity? Yeah, the waitress just called them Scary Wings. Scary yeah. Wings. <laughs> and we got the steak fries, this is what they look like. Basket of celery there on the table. Yeah. Garlic Parmesan. Garlic Parmesan, yeah. With actual shreds of real Parmesan cheese. Yeah, I was going to say, it doesn't look as dry as that other place. Good. It does, it looks really good. And Tanya. Steak fries and a, a chicken wrap. Oh man, let's take a look at that wrap there. You want to break that thing apart? Show the folks at home what it looks like? It's like huge. Oh wow. Yeah. Look at that. Big bites. Are you going to take it a notch as part of the wrap? No. Not for you. <laughs> oh man, that's good. So the verdict is in, huh? Yeah, these are amazing. I'm going to hate to say it, but they're better than. Don't say it. Wings no, 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 no. We're going to no, we're going to bleep that part out. <laughs> no, they are definitely better than wings to go. The oh, the sauce man. on it is much better. Wonderful. And keep in mind these opinions here in this video are only that of Linda, not necessarily endorsed by VAPI or any of its associates. So uh No, wings that's just to go. plain fact. I mean anybody that tried these and tried those would, would say those are definitely better. Going to eat all of them. Now. So all right, so I did the rotisserie bite, but we weren't recording. And this sauce is pretty hot. But nonetheless, here we go. Clean <laughs> bone. I have to say, the wings were pretty good, and this is probably somewhere for me between Buffalo Wild Wings and Wings To Go. Better than Buffalo Wild Wings, not quite Wings To Go though. For one, I love the flavor of that suicide sauce, still my favorite, and their wings are just amazing to me. But I will say this sauce, it is fairly hot. I went to the bathroom, washed my hands, because I've done this before, I washed my hands, then I washed my face, right? Right. Then I used the bathroom, came back, washed my hands, washed my face again. My face is burning. My nose, under my beard, Ooh. like everywhere that water went is burning. Okay. And needless to say, I probably should have waited another 10 hand washes before I went to the bathroom. <laughs> Too much information. <laughs> not even going there. So, there you have it, Tanya. How was your, how was your wrap? <laughs> my wrap was really good, except I asked for fried chicken and I got grilled chicken. Um, grilled chicken. Oh, but all right. No bad, no bad. French fries were good. Mm -hmm. The French fries were good. Um, I have to say, I think this place was better than the than the uh, wings to go that we've had lately. Yeah. <clears throat> Particularly the um, garlic parmesan wings were excellent. They had actual like shreds of real parmesan cheese on there. And another thing that's noteworthy is the fact that these were larger, plumper pieces of chicken than they sell it at Wings to Go. And since I'm usually the one that pays the bill. It was cheaper here, by far cheaper here. After I added the gratuity on it, it was still cheaper. And y'all got like than what we pay at Wings to Go. Everything. Yes. And you can usually yeah. get them. Like there. Yeah. It was it was actually very reasonable um, for the amount of food that we got, and uh, I would highly recommend the Stafford Wings, original Wings, or whatever they call this place. I'm not even sure. It's a pretty good place, Stafford isn't it? Wings. And it yeah. is the place that did used to be 
wings to go. That's this, right. It used to look similar to this. Yep. Stopped by here a while back. But, right. All right. Yay. Here we go. Back on the road. Yep. Here we got the Guatemala Santa Rosa. I gotta say, my one concern with drinking this coffee is that it's possibly gonna reactivate the heat Ooh. because it's finally started to subside a little bit. And, and, and with these wings, they weren't the hottest wings by far. Don't get me wrong, I've had hotter wings. It was just the way the, the sauce kind of spread, like the oils in it or something. Right. You know, yeah. the way it spread up to my nose and my face and everything, you could feel that burn. Kind of pleasant, therapeutic maybe. <laughs> Couldn't help but notice, it looks like Entenmann's. Got a new look here, perhaps one with a darker blue. Didn't recognize it at first. But I gotta say those glazed honey buns look pretty good. So we arrived here at the location in Stafford and we went in, we interviewed the clients. A lot of stuff going on here. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. And give us a summary briefly of what, I, don't I mean. Know if you can briefly summarize it, but um, this woman that's living in the house with her husband, um, she has tenants that live downstairs and one of those tenants is, um, has been affected by stuff. He's his, Hispanic and um, his mother was very much into witchcraft and then um, there's been things that have happened all of his life, but we sort of, and they believe that um, this could be something that's attached to him. So, um, and it very much sounds like that. And I think that's probably where we're gonna try to head with this. But um, I'm really not expecting much because in cases like this, a lot of times we don't get any evidence. Um, but it may be worth it to come back at some point and do a house blessing and um, maybe to even offer them the deliverance information that we've right. written up. Yeah, but you never know. I mean, there, the cases vary. Sometimes, you know, that something does respond. Yes. Uh, sometimes it doesn't, but it does seem like a lot of times something that is darker seems to hide. Right. Now, the interview, of course, in full will be on the paranormal case files. Yes. So we're going to go and we're going to do our baseline sweeps. Mm -hmm. and then go from there with the investigation. Mm -hmm. um, it's like I'm not really around anything right now. It's been going off more in the upper level than it did in the lower level. So if I go around the base of the wall, you would expect it to go off here. But... Nothing, nothing. You would expect it to go off near the refrigerator and it's only at the first green. But for some reason earlier, let's see if it does it now, right here in this area, it's around like nothing, it's going off again. When you would think it would be near the refrigerator. When you would think, yeah, the refrigerator would be higher. And I didn't get anything yellow downstairs. Just one, really? yeah, just one little bit kind of near the bed. That's interesting because on the mel meter, I got the highest points downstairs, like right when we went into the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and right then, there by the bed. Yeah. And that yeah. was it for me. Yeah. Nothing in the, I didn't get anything past green in the laundry room. That's weird. Cause the other one was steady at the same. So you think it's weird that if the other one was stayed at between 0.3 and 0.7 the whole time it was down there, mm -hmm. you think this one would have been picking up something because 0.3 on that one seems to be the equivalent of this that. being up to this point. But I only got this, like, right when I walked in the door to the right before the corner of the bed. Yeah. Right. Right there. And then it stayed this <laughs> the rest of the way. But it's steady right here. The dancing lady? That's okay, I'll, I'll figure out what you're talking about if I need You'll to. See it. You'll <laughs> okay. see it. See if you feel anything coming from that. Okay. <laughs> so we're up here in the daughter's bedroom and Tanya she was just listening to a real-time EVP session she was listening to those headphones through the recorder and on the bed we have the REM pod I'm gonna flip this around here and this thing keeps going off we're not a hundred percent sure that it's something paranormal that's setting it off by any means but one of the theories that we came up with is perhaps it's a CB radio yeah it could be because we have noticed that um, radios like handheld radios will set it off if they're close enough. So we kind of wondered if could it could be a CB radio or something that's setting it off. Um, we, we really don't think anybody in the house has a handheld radio right now and is talking to each other. So what would be the reason? Um, we do have a CB radio out in the car, 
So I think so we're going to test it. Yeah, we're going to check that CB radio. We're yes. going to key it and see if it sets this REM pod off. Yeah. If it doesn't, we know it's likely not a, a radio from one of the passing trucks, and right. it's something in this house that is setting it off. And we just have to figure out what that is. Yeah. So Rule I'm out gonna, any rational explanations, of course. Yeah. So I'm going to sit here in the creepy bedroom alone while um, they go out. Jeff's going to get a mess with the CB radio. She's going to sit out there with a the handheld in the living room and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and key the mic. So here we go. I'm going to key this. Breaker 1-9. This is Ghost Hunter. Anybody okay. read me? Anything go off? So it looks like it wasn't the CB. Copy, nothing went off. That's a good copy. So the CB radio right out here in the driveway is not going to set that thing off. Uh, it would have to be a pretty strong signal. If you are, light that up. Are you here to harm someone? If you are, light that up. I don't know. See, I've asked if it's here to protect someone, and it didn't light up. I asked if it's here to harm someone, and it didn't light up. Right. So whatever's here is definitely not giving us answers to the questions. No. If it is something that's or, actually setting that off. If it is, or if it doesn't find the questions <clears throat> meaningful enough, uh, I don't know. Once again, I'll ask that symbol on the bed. If you're okay with that, give us a green light. It, it, it's definitely going off at random. Mm -hmm. I can't figure anything that's setting it off. I'm trying to think of this, how to say this in Spanish, but... Si te adora Jehovah. Thank you. Entiéndeme. Habla español. Si, si tú eres aquí con ellos. Uh, enciende. La luz. People are getting up right now and trying to like figure out what's going on with YouTube. <laughs> like, they're like, did this switch over to Spanish translation <laughs> or something like that? It was like, simply on Univision. Yeah, what's going on <laughs> here? So when it, to make it clear, when it light lit up green, you ask it. I asked it if it loves Jesus. That's what I thought. Or loves God. Yeah. yeah. And it said yes. I guess, unless it was, an, again, just one of those random spikes from this thing. I would love to have somebody that knows electronics, some electrical engineer, to get a hold of this thing and tear it apart and determine if there's some reason why this thing would be able to set itself off. That's not going to take an electrical engineer, though. This thing, there's directions online on how to build these things. Yeah, but it's still, a pretty simple chip and some PVC pipe. Right, but but to be able to take this thing and analyze the sensors, and the and the circuitry and everything that's involved, that would take somebody a little more knowledgeable than just somebody that's throwing this thing together. That's I would I, I would buy one for somebody just to have somebody take this thing apart, pick it apart, and determine if if it could be manufactured to. Uh, to get false positives, you know, right. I really would.
I think the question you asked it was direct enough that it gave you a pretty quick it was quick. reply. Yeah. The <clears throat> response was direct to your question. But then why wouldn't it answer our other questions? That's what I'm trying to try energy. To figure out. Not enough energy. Could be. I mean maybe it's like the best way I can think. What was that game? There was some game that you would play. And like your energy would go down. I think it was your like... Energy? Yeah, I think it was like WWE, like WrestleMania 2000 or something like that. And your energy would go up and you get to do your special move. And then once you did that special move, you had to build that energy back up before you could oh, do it again. Oh, I see what you're so, saying. So not to relate like... In, you know, Nintendo 64 games to Ghost WWE Hunting. WWE to, <laughs> to Spirits. Yeah. Perhaps they gotta build that special move bar back up again before they can do a suplex, you know what I mean? That could be. That very well could be. I mean, that would certainly explain it because there's... We're asking questions that's answering certain things or see, appears to be answering certain things and then it just stops for a few minutes. <laughs> Can you tell us who you are? Is there something you'd like us to know? Why was the girl afraid to sleep in her room? Can you give us some kind of a sign that you can hear us? If you could come up and touch this pad right here with your hand, we could see that you're a person. So, you know, what's interesting is that this thing's not going off at all now. Mm -hmm. So it can't just be a random thing with the REM pod. So something was in the Something had to be setting it off. Where's the best place in this house for us to go to talk to you? Are you the reason that all those flies were in the house? Who brought you to this house? How long have you been at this house? Is there anything buried on this land that you'd like us to know about? What do you want? Tell me what do you want? The noise back here in the corner. Can you at least move something so we can know that you're here, get close to the light? Turn the light off, we light like the dark. Can you turn the light off over there? Can we turn the light off and look just that way? Oh yeah. yeah. That's... We're going to turn the light off for you if you feel more comfortable. There you go. Is that better? Make the light green. Give us a signal. Dame una señal. Se pete el luz rojo, por favor. Was it you? Yes, it was me. Yes, 
Are you the one that's putting bruises on me? Are you the one knocking on the doors? You like to scare people? Are you trying to say something? Eres un demonio. What happened to you? Hmm. And this thing that was behind me just went up through the ceiling. Here's something that sounds like bullets. Like from an automatic weapon, like war. So we're heading back south on I-95 after the investigation. Gotta say, an interesting investigation, and, and we were there for quite some time. We started the investigation at 9 o'clock, and it's now 4.30 in the morning. We're headed back. Got some hits on the REM pod. Yes. And we talked about that a little bit, the REM pod. Uh, we can't say for sure that it's paranormal. Nothing mm -hmm. seemed to be a direct response. And when it was after a question, it never gave a confirming answer. We always try to get right. that confirming answer, like ask the question again, see if it lights up again. Yeah. And it wasn't. Now, though, we couldn't really find, we tested a couple of different natural things that could be setting it off. Mm -hmm. We weren't really able to find any natural things, but definitely doesn't mean that it's paranormal. Was interesting, though. Right. Some interesting things, we tried the sensory deprivation experiment at the end there, too. Yes. And some interesting things came through that. So we're definitely going to compile this video into one of the paranormal case files, and that will be available later on along with, well, as far as the evidence review, uh, we kind of did a debrief there. And this is one of those cases where what you see is what you get. Uh, anything that happened in the investigation you saw, there wasn't really anything that we picked up EVP-wise. Right. And the one response that came through the spirit box You'll see there in the video as well with us discussing that. So it's kind of one of those type of deals where there won't be the evidence review at the end. Just the investigation and the debrief. Yeah. But, uh, Linda, some thoughts perhaps about the course of the night? Well, um, it was a very interesting investigation, but there really wasn't, like Jeff said, a whole lot of evidence that we carried away from this. Um, the sensory deprivation thing, the Gansfeld experiment, was interesting as it always is. Um, some of the things that, you know, popped into my head where it seemed very random to me at the time um, and that I didn't really quite understand were things that the clients seemed to understand and seemed to relate to. So, um, but yeah, definitely a place where, um, you know, the clients need a lot of help um, and hopefully they can uh, receive that help and get you know get back to a normal way of life because um, they seem to really be suffering yeah so. and a few methods that we'll recommend of mm -hmm. course we recommended one and if that doesn't work uh, recommend a couple more we'll stick with them until we get it solved yeah but uh, being that we're heading south of 95 let me turn up the squelch here a little bit and uh, see if we can get anything through the old CB for Breaker 1 Paranormal. Breaker 1-9, this is Ghost Hunter. Anybody out there tonight? Away. 
I might scare them away with that ghost. <laughs> I might. I mean, they don't want to really know if there's a ghost out there. Breaker 1 9, this is Ghost Hunter. Heading off into the night in search of the unexplained and unknown. We'd like to know if anybody's seen any ghosts out there tonight. Dead. No, that's quiet. Dead silence. We'll be trying along the way. <laughs> Dead silence. Ah, I see what you did there. We'll be trying along the way. It's not too late. Perhaps we'll get a story. Maybe not. But uh, the CB Raider has been a fun thing. It's yeah. something that even though we haven't got a lot of responses on, we're going to keep trying. I mean, it's going to go hand in hand with these road trips right here on the road. Uh, hopefully we can talk to some people along the way, get some stories. And... Uh, We'll keep you posted. We've probably got one more stop before the night's over. We'll be fixing to get some gas here in about 50 miles and probably coffee at the same time. We'll update you with anything we might get over the CB along the way. Breaker 1-9, this is Ghost Hunter. Got my ears on. Perhaps the best coffee on the interstate. Pilot Flying J. Pilot Flying J. It's yep. the Pilot House coffee. Uh, yeah, exceptionally good. Exceptionally good, and it's sold at Pilot and Flying J because Pilot owns Flying J or vice versa. Right. I don't know, but uh, let's go partake. Mm, that looks good. And you can see the steam coming on. And look at this, a plethora of coffee. <laughs> this is something I haven't seen before. Hershey's Waffle Layer Crunch. Strawberry. Perhaps exclusively for Valentine's Day. Yep, probably is. But I'm not sure I'd want to try that. It looked pretty nasty. So I did find something else pretty interesting here. This is a clock, ice alert, and thermometer. I think there's only one thing to do with this. <laughs> so we're back here in the car. We got the Pilot House coffee. Mm -hmm. And Tanya's been trying to get me to eat these muffins. <laughs> they have poppy seeds. Since 3.30. And uh, I'm not sure why she's trying to get me to eat these things. I was going to look and make sure they weren't expired. They're not poisoned, <laughs> they, are they? I don't think they're expired. Check the seal on that. <laughs> real quick. I think the seal is still on them. Yeah, it's still intact. <laughs> All right, well, let's try one of these. And, uh, you know, when it's something like this that's homemade, I oh, kind of like to take small little bites. Oh, geez. Mm. You know I didn't make them. You didn't make them? No. Uh, that, that would explain the Food Line <laughs> sticker, I suppose, huh? If I can get them open. They were homemade by Food Line. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and get one of these and give it a try here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you get for putting stuff in your mouth like that. <laughs>